Hello and welcome to the Chow Bella Flower Shop mini album tutorial series designed for Scrap and Create. If you are just joining the tutorial series, don't forget to check out the links in the description box below where you will find the links for all of the papers and the other supplies that I am using from the Scrap and Create website to create this album. Let's get into the tutorial. I've decided to do something very different for this album. So all four of the pages in the album are going to be completely different sizes. So I'm actually going to build page one and decorate page one, and then build page two and decorate page two, build page three, decorate page three, build page four, decorate page four, because they're all going to be, like I said, completely different sizes. So we are not going to start with the base pages and then build them up like I often do. We're going to start today building up page one and I'm going to be using my white cardstock for this step. So for this page, I'm going to be cutting one piece of my cardstock to three inches by eight and a quarter inches. Now I'm going to set that piece aside for now and I'm going to be cutting a second piece to three inches by nine and a quarter inches. And on this one, I'm going to score on the nine and a quarter inch side at one half inch and eight and three quarters of an inch. Once I have those pieces scored, I'm going to come in here and miter these edges. That way my photo mats will slide in and out easier and it will fit on my hinge easier. Next, I'm going to fold on my score lines and burnish with my bone folder so that I have a nice crisp fold. This will make my pocket tighter so that my photo mats don't fall out when I'm closing my pages. Now I'm going to take this and just double check because I think mine might need to be trimmed just slightly. So because my page, sometimes when I use my scoring board as a cutter, I don't like the way that it cuts. So I will probably switch out and not use it because I need to trim just a little bit off of this piece so that it fits and doesn't hang over the edge. Sometimes what I will actually do is just trim this a little bit less than my measurement. So instead of eight and a quarter, I'll trim it just slightly less. That way it will fit as well. I'm going to take my adhesive now and apply it to one of my tabs. And then I'm going to take my other piece and line the edge up, making sure that the sides are all lined up and then adhere this down. Then I'm going to take my adhesive and apply it on the other half inch tab. Then I will close this, make sure everything is straight and adhere this down. Next, we're going to build up the elements for the front of the page. So I have one piece cut to six inches by eight and a quarter inches. On the six inch side, I'm going to score this on the left hand side at one half inch. and then at three and a quarter inches. Then I have two pieces that I've cut to two and three quarters by four and five eighths. On the four and five eighth inch side, I'm going to score one piece at the top at one half inch. And on the second piece, I'm going to score at the bottom at one half inch. Now I'm going to take my scissors and miter these half inch tabs on all three of these pieces. And then I'm going to use my bone folder to crease all of these folds. For this piece, I actually put the score line on the opposite side, but it doesn't matter. I'm just going to flip it over so my numbers will be upside down. I want the score line to be, or the tab to be on the right hand side 
this piece needs to fold underneath of it. So if you see how mine doesn't actually fold without it gapping like this, I need to make this a little tiny bit smaller. So I'm going to bring my paper trimmer in here and I'm just going to trim a very tiny little sliver and piece off of this just so then this will fit here. So I need that to be completely underneath of that fold. Here is my base page. Remember, it is a tiny little page, but I've got this piece here. Once you have this, put the tab on the right-hand side and you need to measure this and make sure that this is going to fit as well. If it extends past this at all, take this in your paper trimmer and cut slightly on the top or on the bottom and then re-miter your corner. Once your piece is going to fit correctly on your page, you wanna go ahead and add your adhesive to that half inch tab section. And then remember this on the right hand side of the page, we want this tab to go right here. So now if I get this on the page straight, I can burnish this down. I'll open it up and burnish it again. So now we've got this page that flips out multiple times. And then we've got this one. I'm going to take these two flaps now. I'm going to put one at the top and one at the bottom, but before I adhere them on, I need to make sure that they're going to fit and not overlap. I guess it really doesn't matter if they overlap here. You can trim them if you want to so that they don't overlap. Mine overlap a little bit, maybe about an eighth of an inch, and I might actually leave them just because they don't have to meet in the middle because I'm going to have a ribbon closure holding this page shut. So I'm going to leave mine. If you want to trim yours, that is perfectly fine. So I've got my first one. I'm just going to adhere down here to the bottom and then burnish it down. And if for some reason your pieces are wider than your fold piece, you want to make sure that you trim it slightly. Sometimes they can be slightly off if you aren't careful when you are lining your papers up in your paper trimmer. Even going just a little bit over the line sometimes can really throw things off. Or if you're using a different trimmer, I know it sounds silly, but the way that the lines are on my scoring board are a little bit different from how I line things up on my other paper trimmer, so I'm always careful when I'm switching back and forth between the two. So now we've got our flip up, our flip down, then we've got this flip open, and it flips open again. I am going to add one more piece to the inside of the page, so I've cut this to three and five eighths by one and seven eighths. Now on the three and five eighth inch side, I scored this at one half inch, and three and one eighths of an inch. I've mitered my ends on those half inch tab sections, and then I am going to score on, or I'm gonna fold on these score lines and burnish. I'm going to take this and make this a belly band for this center section here. So what I'm going to do first is just mark this in the center so I know where to place it. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply my adhesive to these two half inch tab sections and then adhere right into the center of this section, making sure that I don't cross either of those score lines. That's why the piece is a little tiny bit smaller so that this page will still fold correctly. So once I have that in, it should fold up nicely. We're going to build up the back side of the page first and then we will come back and add our decorative papers. So for the back side, I have eight pieces. They measure two and three quarters by four and a half. On the four and a half inch side of all eight pieces, I'm going to score at one half inch along the top edge 
And then I am going to miter these corners slightly and fold on my score line and burnish with my bone folder. So I'm going to do this to all eight of my pieces. And then I also have one piece that measures one inch by six inches. On the six inch side, I'm going to score this at one half inch along the bottom. And then I'm just going to slightly miter those corners. And then I will fold on that score line. Taking one of the pieces, I'm going to add my adhesive to my half inch tab and we're going to create a waterfall down this page. I wanna make sure that my page is in the correct orientation first. And then I'm going to just place this first one in the center and I'm going to line the score line up with the top edge of the page. And then I'm going to burnish this down. Once the first waterfall is on the page, we'll add adhesive to the tab on the second flap. Then we're going to line up this score line with the edge of that half inch tab. Then I'm going to close the flap to make sure that my sides are lined up nice and straight. And then I'll burnish this one down. Going to repeat that same process with flap number three. And as long as you close your flaps, you should get these pieces on here nice and straight, which is really important so the waterfall looks pretty because it's really easy to get them crooked if you don't close those flaps. So I'm just going to go through and add the rest of my flaps one at a time in the same way. Once I have all my waterfall flaps on, I'm going to go ahead and apply adhesive to the half inch tab on my little small band. And I'm going to adhere this down here at the bottom in the center. So I'm using my centering ruler for this. And I'm just going to adhere this down to the center. Then I will close all of these flaps and this will end up with a piece on it to be the closure for our waterfall. Now I'm going to flip back over to the front side and we are going to start building up the front with the decorative papers. I'm going to be starting with this eight by eight paper here and I'm going to cut out all six of these cards and ink the edges on the fronts only. They will be adhered down so you don't have to worry about the back side. If you are not inking your edges, you don't have to worry about this, but go ahead and cut out all of these pieces. For the front of my pages, I'm going to be using these two cards here. So I'm going to place the mailbox one down here and I'll place the flower market watering can up here like this. I'm going to open my small flaps up now and come on to the inside. From this 12 by 12 paper, I've cut one strip to two and a half by 12 inches. Then I've cut the first piece two and a half to three and seven eighths. And I'm going to place this on the top flap. The second piece is four inches. And then the third piece is three and seven eighths. And it's going to go down here. And then I have my next card that we cut from the eight by eight paper that I'm going to place here. Now, if you think this is too busy, you can also flip these over to the back side for a little bit more of a subdued or bigger contrast. And I like the look of that too, but I'm going to add mine this way with the floral side up. And then each of these is a spot for a photo you could put a fourth photo here, but it's meant for three wallet size photos. I'm going to close these flaps and then open this one, starting with our next eight by eight cut apart. 
I'm going to place this one here. And then I've cut another strip from this paper. I'm using the back side now, two and a half inches, and I've cut three pieces to four inches. And I'm going to place the first one here, just like this. I'm going to be adding my ribbons here that are going to wrap around the front of the page. So I've cut two pieces of ribbon to 12 inches in length, a little bit longer than I normally use because I wanna make sure that I have enough room. Now I'm not going to center this with the page, I'm centering it with the flap. So I've measured over one and three eighths of an inch and that's where I'm going to be placing my ribbon end. So the first one I'll place here at the bottom And then the second one at the top. Then I'm going to take another one of my cards. This one I'm going to be placing down here. It's not going to be centered. I will put a strip of paper down the page later. I'm going to place my card here, and then I've got another one of those pieces that's two and a half by four inches, and I'm going to be placing it here like this. Then I'm going to open this flap up, and I've got another piece of that four inch, two and a quarter by, two and a half by four inch paper for here. And then this one, the final card from that eight by eight paper is going to go here. I've taken this paper again and I've cut a piece to two and seven eighths of an inch by eight inches. From the side, I've cut a piece that's three eighths of an inch and it is going to go here to finish off this part of the page. And then this piece is two and a half inches, so it will slide underneath here, like this. Then from my A4 paper, I've cut this. It's this little piece here, and I'm going to place this on the front of my belly band. Now I've also cut this bookmark down here in the center that I'm going to place under my belly band. And then from this, a4 paper. I've cut this one and I'm going to place it back here as well. Now I'm not going to add cardstock to the backs of these. You can if you want to do so, but I figured you could use this for journaling or smaller photos, whatever you choose to use them for. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere all of these down to finish up the front of the page. Once all those papers are on and you're bookmarks are underneath there you can go ahead and close up your page and tie it closed with the ribbon so that's it for the front of the page and next we're going to come over here to the back side now what i'm going to do to make it easier to put the papers on the back side is untie that ribbon for now so that this will lay a little bit flatter can also do this, which is what I will probably do when I decorate the page so that it's nice and flat and easier to add to my flaps. The first thing I'm going to do to prepare my pieces for the back of the page, I have this from the A4 papers. I'm going to cut all of these cards out. I'm not going to use this tag shaped one, but I'm going to use the other eight cards. So I'm going to cut these out and ink those edges. And then I'm also going to cut out these two tags from this a4 paper and ink around the edges on the front sides. The first thing I'm going to do is add a magnet to the front of this first flap, just roughly in the center. It's actually a little off center because I have placed it where the ribbon is on the other page. Okay, so as long as it's roughly in the center above the closure band, that's where you want it to go. Now, you can put your pieces in any order you want. Um, if you want them to be in the exact order that I have them, I'm going to show you the order that I'm putting them in. But basically, I'm going to be adhering one card to the front of each of my flaps. This is the one I'm going to be putting down first. Then I have this one. Then this one. 
And then this one, the watering can, the one with the door, the flower basket, and then the one with the butterfly. So I'm going to go down and adhere all of these onto the fronts of my flaps. Once all of those cards are on, I'm going to flip up and from my 12 by 12 paper that has the butterflies on one side and this green pattern paper on the back side, I have cut strips of this to two and a half by 12, and then I've cut eight pieces to three and three quarters. Now I didn't ink my edges yet, so I'm going to ink those, and then I'm going to place one of these on each of the back sides of my flaps, and this is where my photos will go when I place my wallet size photos in here. Now after that, I've cut a piece, the same paper, but on the back side to two and three quarters by four and three quarters, and I'm going to place it down here underneath that last flap. Then I've also cut strips of paper from this same side. These pieces are going to go inside here between my waterfall flaps, and these are cut to two and three quarters by three eighths of an inch. So we're going to need one in each of these. So there are seven of these pieces that are going to go between all of those waterfall flaps. And then the butterfly paper is going to go on the back of the flaps. And then this larger piece is going to go down here. So now I have all of my flaps and the spaces in between covered. I can go ahead and put my closure pieces on. I'm going to move this up here first. And from my paper that I used for the other side on this, I'm going to be using the peachy colored side. I've cut two pieces that measure three quarters by five inches. Now for the inside part, I'm going to be placing this up towards the score line. So the bottom section of the band will not actually have any paper on it. And it won't need to have paper on it because I'm going to have one of those tags that's gonna be the closure covering that section. So once I have that part covered, I'm going to flip up and then on this one, I'm going to do the opposite part and place this down here at the bottom. Again, that top portion will not have any paper on it because I'm going to be placing this as my closure. And I'm going to be putting this here, kind of in the center of my journaling card, or in my um, cut apart card. So I'm just going to take my pencil and mark that so I know where to place my adhesive here. Now once I have the adhesive on that, I'm going to put my little tag shape right down on the band and adhere it down. Now what I'm going to do is attach my second magnet to my front of my flap here and remove that backing so I can place this here on my tag. Now the reason that I waited to do this is because once you start putting all this paper on, you'll notice it gets much thicker. So that does push the flaps up a little bit and you wanna make sure that that has a nice adherence versus the magnet not being in the right position. So once that magnet is on, I've got the other one of my tags. It's going to be upside down, but it's the exact same size as the first tag, so it will completely cover everything. You can add a layer of cardstock here if you wanted to do so to make this a little bit stronger, but I am not going to. I think it'll be fine with just these two layers of the decorative paper. So what I'm doing now is just making sure that everything is lined up on these two tags as best I can. And then I'm going to make sure it's adhered completely so that magnet is sandwiched between them. And this is it for that part of the page. So I'm going to come back here to the front side and retie this bow to hold this part closed.
And the only thing left to do on this page is come back later and add a photo mat and I might add some additional embellishments. If you followed my tutorials previously, you know that I like to make my pages first and then embellish everything later. So it's kind of a, a chunky page, but remember this album is not going to be a traditional album, so it will be perfectly fine. So this is it for page one and the end of this tutorial. If you're just joining the tutorial series, don't forget to check the links in the description box below. They will take you to this Grab and Create website where you can purchase all of the Chow Bella Flower Shop papers and the flowers, magnets, and everything that you will need to follow along with the tutorial. I'll see you in the next tutorial.